The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Happy, Happy Easter and welcome to Our Redeemer Lutheran Church in Jacksonville, Florida. As we gather on this early Easter morning, we welcome all of you that join us in person. And we also are so happy to have others joining us by live stream from various places. It is good to be here to be celebrating with other Christians, even our friends across the street, as we rejoice in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hear the witness of the Easter angel. Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. We join in singing the final stanza of Were You There? as we worship the risen Lord. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us ever walk with Jesus to see the depths of his love, to behold the gift of his forgiveness, to gaze upon the heights of his grace, to marvel at the magnitude of his mercy. We travel to the garden tomb, and we need not be afraid. For Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Faithful Lord, with me abide. I shall follow where you guide. You may be seated as we sing, Jesus Christ is risen today.
we join together in words of confession. Forgive me, O Lord, when my besetting sins entangle me and completely surround me. Who will rescue me? Forgive me, Lord, when I am so eager to get, but so reluctant to give, so ready to receive your gifts, but so unwilling to bear the cross. Who will rescue me? Forgive me, merciful Father, when I avoid making any commitment to you, when I doubt that you really see my sin, when I disobey your commandments and am satisfied with only living for myself. Who will rescue me from this body? Forgive me, O Lord, when I am quick to find fault and resentful when someone points out my faults, when I am so soon at play, but so late in prayer. Who will rescue me from this body of death? Forgive me when I rejoice in the temporary, but think little of the eternal, when I am so fond of being idle, but show little passion for helpful service. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Hear the good news. Jesus went to places of rejection, suffering, torment, and death for you. Jesus was determined to go to Gethsemane, Gabbatha, and Golgotha for you. And Jesus lives for you. That's why Jesus forgives you completely and loves you eternally. Faithful Lord, with me abide. I shall follow where you guide. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The choir anthem this morning is low in the grave he lay. Uh, each time that we come to a chorus, we invite you to join in singing with us.
As we gather together on this early Easter morning, we turn our attention to the inspired word of the Lord. First of all, the Old Testament reading, which I have here somewhere. Oh, there it is. The reading for this day is Job chapter 19, verses 23 through 27. Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and lead they were engraved in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. My heart faints within me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle for this Easter sunrise service is Romans chapter 8, verses 15 through 18. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ provided we suffer with him, in order that we may also be glorified with him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Gospel for this day is Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 11. Glory to you, O Lord. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to, the, to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and become, became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he's going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. While they were going, behold, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests all that had taken place. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated for the hymn. Before we start singing, however, let me say that it was a year ago on April 5th, 2020, that we started worshiping outside. And with the exception of the months of June and July, we've had a worship service outside almost every Sunday except a couple when it was below 40 degrees. And the group decided that was a little too cold. So I frankly don't know what I'm going to be doing next Sunday morning when I don't have to get up so early. But um, we are grateful that we've been able to continue worshiping in person, inside and out. Uh, we're grateful that many of you have been able to have the vaccine and that others will be able to get it very soon. Uh, we're thankful that the Lord, even though we know there are loved ones and friends of our congregational families that have uh, died because of the virus. We're thankful that none of our members, to our knowledge at least, um, died because of COVID-19. Now we, I've heard people speculate if perhaps um, Lucille might have had it, but we don't really know for sure. Uh, but in any case, the Lord has been good. We have much reason to rejoice and uh, sing God's praises, and we continue doing so now with the sermon hymn, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. <laughs> Thank you. 
grace to you and peace from God our Father through our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. On this joyful morning, we conclude the Lenten and Easter sermon series entitled Places of the Passion. We have been in spirit to many important places associated with Jesus' passionate love, his suffering, and his death. Most of these things took place in or around the city of Jerusalem in Israel or in nearby villages such as Bethany and Bethphage. We have been to the Mount of Olives across the Kidron Valley to the east of the ancient city, the place where Jesus began his triumphal entry into the holy city on Palm Sunday. We stopped at the Garden of Gethsemane in the upper room and most recently on Good Friday at Golgotha, the place of a skull, both because the hill looked like a skull and because that's where the Romans dumped the bodies of their victims. Today we come to the garden tomb, and we learn that Jesus was not a victim of the Romans or of the hatred of the Jews, but we recall that rather 2,000 years ago, he was the victor who accomplished his heavenly Father's plan for saving the world. Listen to the words of Matthew again. For fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, don't be afraid. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Interesting that the angel told them not to fear, but they were, any, they were afraid anyway. And later when Jesus met them, he told them also, do not be afraid. On the basis of this word of the Lord, we consider the theme, faith triumphs over fear. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we live in a world that has given in to fear. We live in a world where many people are still panicking because of a pandemic, where our concerns are real, where the problems are great, where the victims have been many. But we dare not forget that your promises are greater. And it's your promises that relieve our fears, that give us faith instead of fear. God grant it for Jesus' sake. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, Easter is supposed to be a time of great joy. Alleluia's, the flowers, aren't they beautiful? The music and celebration. But notice in the words of Matthew, Easter began with fear. Great fear. We're going to call it fourfold fear. Here's a working definition of fear. False evidence appearing real. Say that with me. False evidence appearing real. That's it. What is the false evidence appearing real on Easter, that first Easter? Jesus had been beaten barbarically maimed mercilessly, and buried haphazardly. So his ministry, it was over, right? The movement was finished, wasn't it? His cause was done. All hope was gone. It was lost, or so it seemed. Easter begins with great fear, fourfold fear, false evidence appearing so very real. The goal of this sermon is to replace fear with faith. What is faith? Forsaking all, I take him. Say it with me. Forsaking all, I take him. Who is the him? It's Jesus, our Redeemer. Jesus, our Redeemer, creates beauty from ashes. Jesus, our Redeemer, replaces fear with faith. 
But we begin with fear this morning, too. That's how the first Easter began. So let's begin by talking about our fears. As, as much as we may try to deny it, fake it, stuff it, we all live in fear, from one, at least from time to time. Some, perhaps more often than others, false evidence appearing real. This has been especially true during the last year with the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic. Political leaders and the news media have done everything that they could to make us fear the virus so that we would go along with them, that we would obey their orders. They succeeded in stirring up such a cocktail of fear that many people drank it and haven't been themselves since. People who used to go to church regularly are in some cases still afraid to leave the house. People who used to give handshakes and hugs have been convinced that it may never be safe again to do so. Where's the science behind that? You see, when you live in fear, a grizzly bear is behind every corner and it's just a matter of time until it devours us. That big old bear leaps out of the shadows, bears his ugly fangs, and chews us up, along with our family, our friends, and all our finances. As I said, there are things that we could be afraid of. There are genuine and legitimate concerns, and certainly I do not make light of this virus that has made so many people sick and killed so many people around the world. And killed family, finances, and strained government resources. You know the whole story. Fear whispers incessantly, there's trouble out there, so we don't sleep well. We shelter in place. We work from home and no longer whistle while we work. And when others whistle while they work, or maybe somebody gives them a look, you know, the, the look. Are you that naive? We scold them. Haven't you read the news and heard the reports and seen the studies? You could be spreading the virus. Fear tells us airplanes fall out of the sky, bull markets go bare, terrorists terrorize, good people turn bad. The other shoe will drop. The fine print will be found. The virus will kill us. Fear attacks us with two words. What if? What if I don't close the sale? What if I don't get the bonus? What if she doesn't love me? What if my kids have crooked teeth and I can't afford braces? What if they end up homeless, sitting on a street corner, holding a cardboard sign that says, my parents never fix my crooked teeth? What if I get a fever or a cough? What could it mean? Fear twists us into emotional pretzels, makes our eyes twitch, our blood pressure rise, our heads ache, and our armpits sweat. We numb our fear with six-packs and food binges and too much TV. We express our fear with volcanic anger and silent stares. We feed our fears by watching 24-hour news. Oh, yes, we're experts with being afraid. But help is on the way. The Eisenheim altarpiece is located in France. The 16th century altarpiece was created for a monastery that cared for people with skin diseases. That's an important point. Christ has a skin disease in the painting on that altarpiece showing patience that Jesus understands and sympathizes with their fears. The people at the monastery were afraid from their skin, afraid rather that their skin disease would kill them. What is it that causes you fear this morning? What do you think will kill you? Teenagers? Taxes? Cancer? Loneliness, depression, debt, divorce, dementia, a variant of the COVID-19 virus. 
Whatever your fears are, Jesus understands. Now Mary, his mother, also knew a lot about fear. In the altarpiece, Mary is collapsing in anguish into the arms of John, Christ's beloved disciple. A mother's greatest fear comes true. She witnesses the death of her son, her dear son Jesus. What a fearful time for her. John the Baptist also appears on the altarpiece. He's holding a lamb symbolizing the sacrifice of Jesus beheaded by the order of Herod Antipas in 29 AD, John the Baptist couldn't have witnessed Christ's death. The artists include John to remind us of what Jesus, of what John said about Jesus as we have it recorded in John 1:29, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. That's an important point. What looks world-ending is life-giving. Yes, Jesus is the Lamb of God, but he is the one that takes away the sin of the world, your sin, my sin, our ugly, rotten, putrid sin. That's because Jesus is a redeemer. Jesus creates beauty from ashes. Jesus forgives sinners. Jesus changes our fears to faith. The Eisenheim altarpiece has two painted wings that open or close over the central painting, like doors on a cabinet. When the wings are closed, the altarpiece shows the crucifixion, Christ hanging on the cross, his body discolored by a greenish hue, his wounds covering a sick body, suffering, rejection, death, even death on a cross. The outer wings of the altarpiece, however, are open for Easter, and Christ bursts forth from the tomb in that painting. Death has no more dominion over him. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. In the painting, Christ's hands are raised in blessing, and behind him, in orange and startling yellow, a sun rises against the sky. Swirls of yellow, white, red, and blue garments adorn the Christ. But the most amazing feature of the painting is of rubies, precious red gems. The artist placed rubies in Christ's hand where the wounds are, actually right there and right there, and also rubies in his feet. To illustrate rubies come from scars, Jesus our Redeemer creates beauty from ashes and rubies from scars. The disciples' rejection and desertion finally turns into rubies. They follow the risen Lord to the ends of the earth, taking the good news to sinners everywhere. The flogging and the mocking, finally rubies. By his stripes are we healed. The nails and the spear, finally rubies. The evidence of the greatest love imaginable. Death is dead. Sin is forgiven. Hope is eternal. Victory is won. What looks world-ending is life-giving in the end. And Jesus said it would happen. Five times in Matthew's gospel, Jesus said he would rise from the dead. Five times he says, I must go to Jerusalem, suffer many things, be killed, and on the third day be raised again. Five times he said that. Still the disciples chose to live in fear. They abandoned Jesus on Thursday. In the garden, they all forsook him and fled. Only one stands at the cross on Friday. That is John standing next to Mary, Jesus' mother. And on, on Sunday, the first Easter, they're all hiding behind locked doors for fear of the Jews. It's so easy to choose fear, isn't it? To give in to our fears, to forget the promises, to assume the worst, 
to focus on the what if rather than on the what is. What is it that God has said to us? Yes, it's so easy to choose fear. False evidence appearing real over faith, forsaking all I take him. Just ask Grisha Sikwenko. In 1960, an amazing event occurred in a tiny village in the Ukraine. Sikwenko appeared one day, much to the shock of his friends and, fa friends and family, his neighbors as well. You see, everyone thought that Grisha Siklenko had died during World War II. Actually, the night that he marched away to war, he went home where his mother had made a hiding place for him under a manure pile. And so for 18 years, Grisha Siklenko lived in manure. In the winter, he nearly froze to death. In the summer, he nearly suffocated to death. But finally, in 1960, Grisha walked out of the manure expecting to be prosecuted, punished, and placed in prison for being a deserter from their military. But his fears were groundless. The statute of limitations had long since expired. Fear does that. We end up living in manure. Then guess what happens? Life stinks. Life really stinks. How many of you have been to a farm and smelled that smell? My dad, when we were driving through the countryside of Iowa and we passed a pig farm, which is a memorable experience, would say, that's the smell of money. And no, I would say that's the smell of something quite different. Would you rather live under a manure pile of fear or live by faith in Jesus Christ? I know the answer to that. We all want to live by faith. We don't want our fears to get the best of us. So we need to claim the promises. Here's one to claim. He's not here, for he's risen just as he said. Just as he said, he points us, the angel points us to the promises, the words of Jesus. Jesus says, I took your sin away. I conquered death. I'm alive bodily. I'm alive eternally. I am going to take care of you. I promise to be with you always, even to the end of the age. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and, and glory by Christ Jesus. I am going to come again to raise my children with glorified and perfected bodies and to take those Christians that are still living to heaven. Fear be gone. His promises lead us to live by faith. Do you know what the most frequent command in the Bible is? What instruction, what order is given repeatedly by prophets, by angels, by Jesus, and by his apostles? What do you think? Be good. Be holy. Don't sleep during the sermon. No, the most frequent command in the Bible is don't fear. Fear not. Do not be afraid. You've probably heard it said 365 times it's recorded in the Bible. After your Easter dinner today, why don't you count them up? I believe whether there are 365 or 402, the point is very clear. There are more than enough, more than enough promises to inspire our faith. So we need no longer give in to fear. Because living in fear really makes everything stink. Faith, forsaking all, I take him. I take Jesus, my Redeemer. He creates life from death, joy from sadness, beauty from ashes. Remember the rubies. You have small children? Don't fear. 
The Lord promises that he will be with them too. There were plenty of things when you were young that your parents feared regarding the future for you. If you have teenagers, don't fear. You are a teenager too. You know they'll survive it. And so will you. Do you fear everything has gone terribly wrong and it could only get worse? Don't fear because Jesus assures us, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Are you sick? Don't fear. By his stripes you are healed. Is your heart broken? Don't fear. Claim the promise that he loves you with an everlasting love. What else is to, left to say but this? Forsaking all, I take him. Hallelujah. Amen. And may the peace of God which surpasses our human understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. This is perhaps the first year in memory that we're not having an Easter breakfast. We really did not know what to expect in terms of who would come and who wouldn't come and so on. And you know, as I thought about it, I think it's enough just to be here worshiping both at the sunrise service and inside at 10 o'clock with our Easter festival service and Holy Communion. Now, it's enough to be together again uh, with our loved ones and friends in worship. And uh, so even though we may be hungry and miss the breakfast today, rest assured we have every intention of resuming the practice next year. The same thing with the Easter egg hunt. I didn't even buy balloons this year, but uh, many of those things are, are fun and nice and, and good, but they're not the main thing. The main thing is that the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. As we gather for worship this morning, we remember those uh, for whom prayer has been asked in recent days. Their names are listed in the bulletin. Let us rise now as we join together in prayer. And you know what? I forgot something. We're passing the offering plate this morning. So go ahead and have another seat. This is also the first time in about a year that we are passing the offering plate. Uh, if any of you have concerns about it, there is hand sanitizer just inside the church. But uh, we would go ahead and receive the offering at this time. <laughs> My 30 years as the pastor of this church, I think I've only forgotten the offering once. That was during a Good Friday service. And those of you that have joined us for our Good Friday services know it's a very different uh, sacred uh, service remembering Christ on the cross. But I'm glad I didn't forget it today. Let's rise as we join then in prayer. Onward in Christ's footsteps treading, pilgrims here are home above, full of faith and hope and love. Let us do the Father's bidding, and so we pray. Living Lord Jesus, on the first day of the week, you rolled away the stone from the tomb and opened up life for all who believe. Roll away the stones of fear in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living Lord Jesus, you understand our situations. You know what we've been through individually and as a nation in the last year. You know what challenges we still face. Replace our fear with bold faith, a faith that looks at challenges, pain, setbacks, and heartaches, but gives it all to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living Lord Jesus, release us from the prisons of fear that we might be 
be set free. Free all who live in bondage to anxiety, chained to addiction, and enslaved to evil. Bless those who, because of the events of this past year or their present circumstances, suffer from depression or even consider suicide. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living Lord Jesus, you set your table before us. The remembrance of the Passover fulfilled and the anticipation of the future prepared for us. Give us faith that we may receive Holy Communion for our benefit and show forth love for you and for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living Lord Jesus, you address the sick and the suffering with your grace to heal, relieve, and restore. Give all the sick, the wounded, the grieving, and the dying the full measure of your healing grace to support them in their time of need. And through your precious promises, relieve their fears as they place their faith in you. Lord, in your mercy. Living Lord Jesus, you bid us to go forth confidently with Easter faith and a, a deathless and endless alleluia. We will do just that in the power of your Holy Spirit and a witness to the world. Jesus, let me faithful be. Life eternal grant to me. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus invites us to walk with him to the garden tomb, a place of great joy and a place of great love. We walk with Jesus all our days to the empty tomb and resurrection victory. Let us ever walk with Jesus. We join in singing the hymn stanza. of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God our Father, and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with you always. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.